painting an I Spy mural and this is a mural that has something that begins with every letter of the alphabet in it and it is often used in hospital waiting rooms so that patients can stay entertained while waiting for whatever they may be there for. I've been working with splashes for about a year and a half, almost two years. It feels like so much longer. Like everyone welcomes you in with open arms. So you immediately feel part of the Splash family. Last year, I believe in 2020, we painted 288 different murals that got installed all over the country. I have been interested in art from a young age. Uh, my interest in art is really rooted in its ability to help me express how I see it and also learn how others see. I have a condition called albinism that causes me to have a lack of pigment in my hair, skin, and eyes, and as a result, I'm legally blind. I have usable vision and see best really, really close up to things. So drawing and painting became a way for me to learn what things look like by taking pictures and uh, looking really close at them and then trying to replicate what I saw. And it also has become a way for me to show other people how I see it. And it's opened up a great conversation about different people's perceptions. I think it has really impacted me very positively because it causes me to be very thoughtful about everything I do. It does sometimes, it does present challenges and take me a little longer to complete things. Uh, but it also has given me a lot of opportunities too. Liz was born with albinism and is legally blind. Her ability to create gorgeous murals is as inspirational as the artwork itself. After 25 years, Splashes of Hope continues its mission to brighten the world with art. So welcome, Liz. Thank you for having me. So when we talk about this albinism and the fact that you are legally blind, most people would not even think that you could be an artist. Why do you think that your being legally blind makes you a better artist? Yeah, I, people are often like, well, why did you choose art? And I, my answer is always, that's exactly why I chose art. Because I think having a unique perspective and vision has like caused me to be very curious. And art is just a form of communication in order to like explore those questions that I have. So I've been able to use art as a form of trying to like figure out how I see in comparison to others and use it as kind of a method of like problem solving and along the way also it's been a great way to like connect with other people, an opportunity to like be vulnerable about what others are going through and what I'm going through and connect on that level too. So it's great that you're an artist, but what inspired you to get involved with Splashes of Hope? Uh, I first heard about Splashes of Hope after my freshman year in college and I was looking for something to do during that summer and Splashes seemed like the perfect fit because I wanted to do something related to art but I also wanted to make sure it was something that I was like passionate about and that I knew that I was really making a positive difference for others and Splashes like perfectly fit that bill and it was a great opportunity for me to like connect with other people and uh, learn so many different skills, whether it be art or otherwise. So it, it is safe to say that it helped transform your life. Can you share with us maybe one or two examples of an interaction you may have had with a patient or a recipient of your artwork that made you realize like, wow, I did something extraordinary here. Yeah, I think the one big one that always stands out to me is the first time I went on to a mural installation. Uh, so we'll go to hospitals or other healthcare centers to install the murals. And the first time I went was really when I saw what impact Splashes of Hope can have. Because I think when hearing about what the organization does, you know, okay, like these are beautiful murals, they're going to make a space look nice. But that was the first time that I think I saw the impact it had on individual people. So I went and helped install murals in the phlebotomy room, so where children were getting their blood drawn. And right after the mural was installed and we had cleaned the space, a little boy went in to get his blood drawn. And you could hear it in the room, he was like screaming, crying, he was not happy to be there, rightfully so, but 
uh, nothing was consoling him, and eventually I heard the his mom say, look up at the ceiling, because we had just installed a mural on the ceiling, and like he looked up at the ceiling and immediately like calmed down, and the rest of the time he was completely like, quiet and all calm, and it showed me that these like were directly influencing how children were experiencing these like difficult times. That's awesome. I, can you articulate how has Heather personally changed your life? Yeah, I think Heather is a big inspiration to me. Seeing her passion and drive and work, work ethic and the way that um, she's able to build such a special community of people that have uh, willingly embraced each other and are there to support and uplift no matter what. I mean, she's obviously a phenomenal painter and I have like love getting to watch her paint and learn from her, but it's also the way that she's able to connect everyone and just build an environment where everyone feels welcome and loved. Uh, is something that I will definitely, I'm always learning and taking anything I can up from what she does. So a lot of the people that are going to watch this presentation are pediatric patients who are stuck in a hospital. What they're going to look at when they see you is somebody who has overcome so much. Can you share with them what it is that gives you your drive every day? I think, especially with growing up with albinism, uh, my parents always instilled in me that never say you can't, always ask how can I? And I think I've taken that to heart in everything that I do, that I'm always looking for the how can I, or if there are limitations set, how can I pass beyond those? Or given what I can do, how can I make sure I do that to the fullest? And I think that is something that will I will take with me no matter what I do, is having that passion and drive. And if someone says, I can't, then I'm like, okay, well, how can I, and let me figure it out, and having that, oh, my own motivation keeps me going to try new things and to be really be passionate about whatever opportunities are open to me. Uh, but even being here at Splash is the network of volunteers that I've met, and sitting here painting murals, I'll sit and paint for hours with someone, and during that time we have the deepest conversations and learn about each other's life, and I've gained so much like, knowledge from the wisdom that they've opened up and shared with me. And the, I also having albinism, a lot of people tend to, because I am very open about my challenges, they tend to be very vulnerable with me about theirs. And so I always appreciate hearing what other people have experienced and taking that to heart with me in whatever I do moving forward. What do you, what do, you do to motivate yourself on any given day? Yeah, I, Albinism has influenced every aspect of my life just because the way that I have to approach things is going to be different. Uh, it's a challenge that can often be seen right on the forefront because I don't have pigment in my hair, I don't have pigment in my eyes or my skin, and I, when I look at things I have to hold them this close to my face so I could see it. So it's not something that you can just hide. And that can present challenges because it's sometimes nice to be able to pretend like you fit in with everything, but it's also presented so many opportunities with me, and it's a part of me, and I, I learned to embrace that and be proud of that. It's made me who I am today, and, and I, I've always had albinism, so I don't know any difference, so it's just a part of my world and how I've like adapted, but I think it's something that I'm so grateful for. At first, I know my parents were very overwhelmed like finding that out, and it's shocking at first, and um, just realizing that it's you could, taking the harder route of doing and going on and pushing through when things are really challenging can be hard in the moment, but you'll look back and be so grateful that you did that because it opened up opportunities and experiences and anything that is challenging has a greater reward at the end. So when you know you've put in all this work and effort to get to something, even if it's the simplest thing, whether it's like getting out of bed that day or it could be going and painting thousands of murals, no matter what that is to you, like taking that step, you'll be grateful looking back that you did it. <laughs> well, Liz, thank you so much. We really appreciate your story, but more importantly, we appreciate your spirit. Your spirit is something that we need in the world right now, and people need to be motivated to know that they can make a difference. I often talk to people and I say, you know, it's really hard to change the world, but you can change your little corner of it. And what you did at your university to inspire a splash club to be formed is changing that corner of the world 
And let's hope that all of the people that participate in that carry that forward. And that's how you change things in the world, is with little steps like that in your own backyard. So congrats and thank you. Thank you very much.